Last night, we had a couple of teams that weren't playing that had great nights because they're officially in the playoffs. You had the Toronto Maple Leafs clinching last night with the Panthers loss to the Sens, and then the New York Rangers also clinching their playoff spot with the Sabres losing to Montreal as well as Panthers losing to Ottawa. Let's start with the top team, and it's... It doesn't matter what happens in the regular season with Toronto. It all comes down to what happens April 17th, game one of round number one. Is this the year that Toronto kind of exercises those demons, gets over that first round hump? Uh, I think it could be. I thought last year could have been, and last year could have been. Um, you know, they had opportunities. They're going to play Tampa again. It's, it's already set in stone. Uh, you know, last year, uh, they were up three games to two, and they had game six, and then game seven, they lost it at home. It's going to be the same situation. Chances are really good. They're going to end up with home ice. And um, they, it, it's not about, yes, it's about winning the Stanley Cup with this group of players. But you can't win the Stanley Cup if you don't win the first round. You saw that, uh, the stat. Since 2004, they haven't got out of the first round. That being said, last year, they, they've been improved every year. So from what they did last year to get to Game 7 and lose at home, the, I saw no reason why they couldn't have won that game last year. And I think if it, you know, Vasilevsky was incredible. But I look at it the same. They have the team to be able to do it. Are they going to do it? Well, I'll talk to you after the Game Tell 7. Like, Adele, seriously. Right? Yeah. How much pressure is it? How much is between oh. the ears with this team now? Well, I, I, you know what? You'd have to pretty much ask the guys on the team. I mean, last year there was a lot of pressure. The year before there's been a lot of pressure. If you're in the city of Toronto, there's a lot of pressure to win all the time, um, especially with the payroll the top four guys have got. There's all sorts of pressure. And the guys, you can say, ah, we block it out. I'm sorry, it's impossible. We play the game. You don't block out stuff like that. But, uh, there, yeah, there, there is a lot of pressure. I mean, if they get – that's where Tampa's going to get the edge. I think if they, if they get up in the series 2-1 to one or some of that, that's where – all sorts of pressure is going to be on Toronto. If it's one nothing, one one two on Toronto has a lead in the series, I don't think they'll feel the pressure. If they fall behind in the series, I think that's when we're going to see some of these guys really start to feel. Picking it. up on where you left on the fact that last year they played terrific, they did everything possible, but win in Game Seven because I don't think they could have played a better series. I thought they played yeah. fantastic against Tampa Bay. I think game could four, game four is a bad way. game. That was right. that was like the the stinker of the series. But you're Tampa playing a team, do. yeah. That Going to the went to the Stanley Cup Finals three times. I mean, that year obviously they had won back to back and trying for a three peat. They're playing the Tampa Lightning, and it was this close. I know close, but no cigar doesn't mean a whole lot. But they're the only team in the National Hockey League that 19 years since they've won a playoff round, it's Stanley Cup or bust because that's what they're thinking. But you've got to win the first round that you're talking about because the Leafs are that good to me. I. I <clears throat> All their top guns are having terrific years. They're they're poised and ready, it seems, to make a playoff push here. Their goaltending seems a little more solidified. you got two guys now that uh, you can rely on, I believe, and they've added a lot of depth and some pieces that everybody says more playoff-type players with O'Reilly and Achari and even Lafferty, heavy yep. guys Good. that can win one-on-one on one puck battles. On depth the on end. defense. So yeah. whether... All of them are even in the lineup, but they've got the depth if some guys go down. So they address some needs, I believe. Now, let's see. And let's not forget Tampa Bay Lightning are the Tampa Bay Lightning. They're done That's that. a team that is able to turn on the switch when they have to. They're not going great right now. For me, I wouldn't be too worried about that. Certainly, uh, if, you know, I'm a hockey fan of the Tampa Bay Lightning because, yeah, they'll, they'll address it, and I'm sure yeah. they are, and John Cooper uh, has – their attention right now in practice and certainly going into the game tonight against Carolina. But if there's a team that can turn the switch on when the playoffs uh, are upon us, it's the Tampa Bay Lightning. They just do it because they've been there. They had the experience. They had guys that won cups. And uh, they, when you are when you already have that mojo, that feeling inside and been through all those uh, four round battles, you you sometimes cruise yeah. to the uh, end of the regular you know, season. It's like you look, you yeah. look in net, you see Andre Vasilevsky. You used to look in net and see Martin Brodeur. Yeah. <laughs> and nice Andre Vasilevsky, did, 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 did he have a bad game last year? Like he, he was dominant. In games that they were to win when they had the lead in the series and they were going to clinch. Well, he, he beat the Leafs, in my He's opinion. He did, yeah. And that's, now, that's the key. He looks a little bit human during regular yeah, season yeah. At, times. at times. Does that give the Toronto Maple Leafs fans and uh, the Leafs in general 
a little hope that maybe he's a little vulnerable, although we doubt it, right? Yeah. Rita, uh, playoff time. Again, we'll have to wait until the playoffs <laughs> yeah. happen. How about the Rangers? This is a team that made a deep run last year, yeah. maybe ahead of schedule. Are they now a deeper team this year heading into the playoffs? Well, uh, no question they're more skilled. Um, great acquisitions um, w when you're bringing in you know, Hart Trophy winners, Stanley Cup winners. There's no question. Both Tarasenko and Kane are tremendously, tremendously talented on the offense. They, they, they automatically you start stretching the lines that you automatically have three lines that can score goals and three lines that can compete against anybody. And when you get to the playoffs, that's usually what you say. It's like that third line. You match up the third line. The team who has a better third line is usually the team that wins the playoff round. Well, uh, the Rangers can match up with anybody as far as one, two, three lines. And that, to me, is 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 huge up front. They're solid as could be on the back end, and they've got Shesterkin and Net. You're not going to, you know, you want to drop a team, that's, that's the way to do it. This is a... This is a well put together team, higher skilled, I believe, than what they had last year. I thought the acquisitions they got last year, the trade deadline were good, but this year's acquisitions really bring game breakers on every line, which you, uh, in my mind, you can't have enough of game breakers in the playoffs. You have to have your star power. The Rangers have plenty of star power. They had enough star power to start with, mm -hmm. but they've even got more star power now. Yeah, when you had a Tarasenko and Kane, and obviously veteran experienced guys that have won Stanley Cups. It's going to help your team. Now, they're highly skilled. Are they a little bit older? Of course they are. They're not maybe the players they were three, four, five years ago. But still, I think they're going to be highly motivated. Uh, obviously, with the Ranger team that's had really good runs the last couple of years, a deeper team. And I think their one-two punch of Zibanejad and Panarin is as good as any in the league. When they're, when they're firing on all cylinders, they're just so dangerous. They back up defense, the shot, the no-look passes from Panarin. I can go on and on and with Fox on the back end. It can be deadly and intimidating for the opponent at times. If you kind of don't have a good structure, they'll pick you apart. Now, I guess I would say defensively in their zone, are they vulnerable once in a while? Sure they are. But I think they plan on having the puck yeah. a lot during the playoffs. And they're poised and uh, ready, I think, as any team in the Eastern Conference outside the Bruins because the season they've had, I know they're heavily favored to come out of the East. But the Rangers are one of those teams that certainly could come out. It would not surprise anybody, certainly not me. Yeah. All right, we'll have to see how it all plays out. All teams in the East chasing one team at this point. That is the Boston Bruins, who have a chance tonight to clinch the President's Trophy. They have to beat Nashville as well as get a little help here in another game. Carolina has to lose to the Tampa Bay Lightning in regulation. The Golden Knights also can punch their ticket to the playoffs. Uh, they need to win against Edmonton in regulation and then about 18,000 other scenarios. If it happens, we'll tell you how that one plays out.